Thank you for staying with us. Now, we're about 50 days to the inauguration of the 10th National Assembly. The race for the next leadership of both chambers is getting more fierce. Uh, well, it is expected because it is often said that the success of every democracy rests squarely on the quality of the parliament, hence the need to always have in place a solid legislature with sound players. Joining me this evening to discuss battle for National Assembly leadership is a member of House of Representatives representing Warno Rabba Federal Constituency of Sokoto State, Honorable Ibrahim Al Mustafa Aliyu, is also the Deputy Chairman of the House Committee on Urban Development, as well as the Chairman of the Ad Hoc Committee on Petroleum Product Subsidy Regime. We will be discussing the battle for 10th National Assembly leadership. Thank you very much for joining us this evening, Honorable. Thank you so very much, Mark. Uh, so before we get uh, to the core issues for tonight, uh, let's start with a countdown to the inauguration of a new government, which is 24 days away. How will you describe the expectations of Nigerians? Well, um, I expect that Nigerians have high expectations on the incoming government, particularly now when you look at uh, the modest achievement, of course, um, recorded by the outgoing um, administration of uh, uh, President Muhammad Buhari, and of course the very beautiful manifestos of the president-elect, um, Alhaji Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And you see Nigerians have a rekindled hope, a renewed hope that uh, things will change for the better. So Nigerians are eager to see the May 29th, so that those manifestos can begin to you know, be implemented henceforth. All right, so uh, apart from the expectations, what is the mood like from what you've been able to gather and observe so far? Ready? All right. Now, let's move on. Now, one testy, very key decision for the country to make after the 2023 elections is leadership of the 10th National Assembly. Why is there so much fuss about this? Well, you see, that is the beauty of democracy. Um, uh, I'm sure just the background news that we just watch on how eligible aspirants are coming up to contest for the various offices, particularly the four um, major offices of uh, Senate President, Deputy Senate President, the Speaker, and the Deputy Speaker. You see uh, how um, aspirants from uh, far and wide from across the country are coming out to, 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 to contest uh, for the position. But that does not mean that um, you know, each and every one of them is taking it as a do or die you know, issue. Um, they believe they have the competence and of course each and every a member of the National Assembly to a certain extent you know, has what it takes you know, to be able to you know, um, uh, be assigned a certain responsibility. But to preside over, you know, it takes a lot of considerations, particularly the issue of integrity, issue of competence, you know, issue of, of experience. So I believe um, all that we are seeing now will fade out when finally the party leadership and of course our leaders, you know, start and uh, take a definite decision each and every member will follow. All right, so, I mean, we've seen how hot uh, of years the race to the leadership of the 10th National Assembly uh, is at the moment. So how will you describe the impact on the politics? Well, to me, it's um, by, by way of deepening the, the democratic process. Um, if you look at the caliber, as I've said earlier, of those that comes out to, to, to contest for the various positions, um, it shows that people have confidence in the system and that uh, they have one thing or the other to offer. But uh, let me quickly take you through the history lane to give you a background of how we're able to achieve unity and stability in the ninth, in the current assembly, the ninth house of um, representative or the ninth 
um, assembly, national assembly. Um, at the beginning, there are this area of you know change where uh, leaders are, are being uh, searched to come up and uh, take over the leadership of the national assembly as a very important uh, institution and an arm of government. Um, the leadership of the party, particularly the ruling party, APC, intervened, and at the end of the day, all those aspiring to be uh, speakers and uh, Senate president, you know, will have to toe the line of the party and um, ensure the party's supremacy. And that we produce um, in the national, in the House of Representatives, this joint task, where uh, the current speaker, Right Honorable Femi Bajabe Miller, and the deputy speaker, uh, Ahmed Idris Wasi, hold this way. And uh, it was a very stable um, House of Representatives ever, uh, with a lot of achievements. Um, I think the achievements are even unprecedented if you look at the um, legacy and um, legislation that we are able to achieve within the period of four years. The PIA, for example, the CAC, Corporate Appeals Commission Act, and uh, even the issue of the Electoral Act that have become a serious uh, challenge to the previous assemblies were successfully resolved. So many bills, including private members' bills, that uh, were passed were also assented by the president. So you can see the harmony that was achieved because um, members decided to, you know, to the party line and the leaders line, and you are able to produce uh, competent leaders that took up the, the mandate and were able to deliver. So even in the ten assembly, as we um, are looking at this, as I've said earlier, so many aspirants of competence comes up. But even within them, you know, um, I believe the leadership of the party and the, uh, our leaders are profiling each and every candidate based on the major um, factors I highlighted earlier of competence, integrity, and experience. So that at the end of the day, when a decision is reached, every member will follow. But before then, in the um, uh, members that are experienced members around or members of wisdom d decided to come up with a pan-Nigerian group that the uh, ninth assembly, uh, 10th Assembly joint task. The reason being to create an avenue of unifying members to understand the wisdom behind um, giving the lead to the leaders and the party to make the right choice on our behalf. That does not take away our own ability because we already know who and who are contesting for what, what and what and what are the, their backgrounds, what competencies they have to be able to, um, you know, preside over the House successfully going forward to be able to achieve our beautiful, the beautiful manifestos of APC um, under the uh, able leadership of our President uh, All right. Thank you very much for that, uh, Honorable Liu. So, as it stands now, uh, many zones are laying claims to the leadership of both chambers. I mean, we have uh, the South South saying, uh, we um, contributed a lot to the victory of our party, so we have to be rewarded. We also have uh, South Easterners saying, over 40 years, no South Easterner has been set a president. It is our turn. Why this when the APC is yet to zone the positions? Well, um, you see, there are critical issues of balance that definitely the party ha is considering. Um, for example, you see we have the president from the um, southwest geopolitical zone and the vice president from the um, uh, northeast geopolitical zone. So definitely um, the remaining four offices will have to be, you know, uh, macro zone or shared between these four remaining zones. And uh, I believe the agitations from the south-south or the south-east is very cogent, just like this uh, northwest and the north-central. So the party now will weigh and see what goes to where. And that I think it's a, matter of, it's a matter of national development, national interest. Uh, whatever it is, the most important thing is to be able to serve the, the, the nation, the government, 
with uh, diligence, loyalty, and uh, sincerity. So uh, I'm, I'm sure the party will do the needful, and at the end of the day, everybody will be happy about it. So talking about uh, the party doing the needful, uh, many analysts are of the view that the delay by APC leadership to zone the position is dangerous. I would like you to react to that. That should be consultation. That consultation should be thorough. Each and every stakeholder must be carried along. You know, everything about democracy is about give and take. There should be consensus, consensus building. There should be um, understanding. There should be agreement. I believe the party is just doing that, and the leaders are not just resting on, the, uh, on it. Um, I believe very soon there should be direction, and uh, everybody will be happy about it, as I've said. So, Honorable Ali, you have described as cogent some of uh, the agitations by these zones. Uh, the Southeast zone is laying claims to the Senate presidency to balance the power equation of the country. How feasible is this with the situation of things? Well, I didn't get your last statement. Maybe if you can repeat. Myself. Uh, because you've described these agitations as cogents, that's why I'm going to be asking these questions. The Southeast Zone is laying claim to the Senate presidency to balance the power equation in the country. How feasible is this? Well, you see, in whatever situation one finds himself, what is expected of him is to be fair, fair to himself and fair to uh, whoever that you know, maybe he is co-existing or cohibiting with. Now, the Southeast uh, eminently, have, uh, eminently qualified uh, uh, leaders or aspirants that can fill the office and they have been uh, Senate president for, for, for a number of times uh, since the return of democracy in 1999. But under the, the, the present arrangement, uh, when you are talking about balance, when you are talking about justice done, you know, when justice is to be done, you know, justice is blind. Now you look at pot political justice, um, you know, it uh, relates to your contribution, your participation as an individual or as a group. So I believe the party is weighing those options to see which um, particular um, section, you know, maybe gives certain contribution to the success of the party at the national level or otherwise. And if parties so decide that, okay, we are emphasizing that consideration and that the leadership of the Senate should go to the Southeast, so be it. What we are talking about is getting the right man on the job that can uh, give the necessary support to the uh, president to succeed and then move the country forward as expected. So we also have the South-South, you know, also vying for the position of the next uh, Senate president. Do you agree that it should be zoned there? Well, you see, I don't want to preempt the decision of the leaders and the party. Definitely. But, you know, I have given you uh, uh, an overview from my own uh, assessment and understanding. The party may think otherwise. If there is a, a particular individual, A, B, C, D, and each individual, you know, contributed to the success of the party, the percentage of contribution I think should also be taken into consideration. But if the party feels, okay, no problem uh, to balance the power equation, the Senate presidency should go to the Southeast, then who am I? As far as I'm concerned, I will follow. I'm a very loyal party man. So I, what we need is somebody who is competent enough. But I don't see, um, I don't think um, the party will have to will be just, will justify whatever decision it takes. Maybe, probably let me rephrase my question. You know, the South uh, South is saying that 
We contributed a massive vote to the victory of our party, and that's the reason we are agitating that the Senate president must come to that zone. Is that enough justification? Yes, for the South South, to a certain extent, if you look at the quantum of contributions they bring forth to the table that lead to the success of APC in the national election, then it's an, it's, it's enough justification, more especially if you are t looking at the issue of, you know, also satisfying the religious equation. You know, it, um, there's no um, uh, issue or there's no problem taking the Senate presidency to the South-South, of course, but I don't want to preempt the party and the leaders. I'm sure they are doing the needful. But as far as I'm concerned, if it's the South-South, they have every reason whatsoever to, to, to agitate with the Senate presidency. Bali, you another zone is uh, the Northwest, uh, but this time some political analysts have urged senators from that zone vying for the Senate presidency to drop the ambition in the interest of fairness and equity. Why are they yet to step down? The senators from Let me repeat my question. As some political analysts have urged senators from the Northwest vying for the Senate presidency to drop the ambition in the interest of fairness and equity, why are they yet to step down? They have their reasons. One, most of the senators from the Northwest, 95% of them or more, or even 100%, let me say this, are Muslims. And now, with the um, uh, consideration of religious beliefs, that you have the president and the vice president, all Muslims, the third person in the hierarchy should be a Christian. And I think that is the, the, the viewpoint why they think the senators from the um, Northwest should drop their ambition. Um, I have already made my point clear. You see, I believe the leaders and the party are looking at every zone and critically analyzing the factors um, to arrive at the most acceptable um, uh, zoning uh, formula that can be accepted and uh, you know, appreciated by all. So let us wait and see what the next week will be. But of course, uh, balancing the religious issue is very, very important because some people are uh, seriously agitating for that. But you know, for me, I always give uh, um, uh, emphasis to um, ability to, to deliver. That is merit and uh, competence. All right, so let's get to uh, the Green Chamber where the Northwest Northeast and North Central zones are laying claims to the Speaker of House of Representatives. Honorable Liu, which of these zones do you think should be considered? You see, when the presidency goes to the south, macro zone to southwest, President Tinubu emerged now elect. The vice presidency goes to the north and then northeast to um, Senator Kashim Shatima. If the Senate president should go to the south and to the southwest or southeast, definitely the speaker is expected to move to the north, either north, central, northwest, or northeast. But what we are saying is that irrespective of where it is done, if it's done to the next, not, I convert that it, it, it will be done to the north, and when it is done to the north, wherever the party now decides. Because the issue, even in the National Assembly as an institution, that by, by, by now we are supposed to be consolidating on the modest achievements um, of our various um, ex uh, experience or existence since 1999. We know those that can, that are able, that have the capacity and the necessary experience to you know, preside over the, 
the, the National Assembly going forward. Our leaders know them. Our leaders have the profile of all the aspirants that are you now that comes out to, con to, 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 to contest or to aspire for the position of Mr. Speaker. So definitely, at the end of the day, you know, um, zone to a particular zone or sub-zone, and of course, even maybe macro-zone to a particular individual. So for me, I'm of a strong, um, I have the strong position that the speakership should be zoned to the north so that we can have a balance of power with the south producing a Senate president who may be, you know, a Christian, and then in the north, when it's zoned to the north, then there should also be consideration by the leaders to decide based on capacity, integrity, and uh, experience who take the charge, and everybody will follow. All right, so Honorable, Honorable Lee, in fact, that is uh, the essence the... of the... Please go ahead. Okay. In fact, that's the essence of the mm -hmm. Joint Tax mm -hmm. Tenth Assembly. To unify members, irrespective of the political affiliation, to understand that the National Assembly is an institution of itself that need to be deepened, that need to be uh, developed, and then we need leadership, of course, that will move that, um, um, uh, that forward. All right, so still, you know, we have the Northwest, Northeast, and North Central zones. Anybody, what zone do you think the speakership should be zoned to? This is a big question. You see, I don't want to, I don't want to preempt the decision of the party. But you know, when you look at the Northwest, Northwest don't have the vice president or president. The North Central don't have the vice president or president. The North East have the vice president. But of course, even under the same arrangement, Mr. Speaker is from the same um, uh, zone with the vice president. So, but what we are saying now in the given circumstance that we are looking for balance and stability, these zones that I mentioned earlier, the two zones that I mentioned earlier should be considered for the position of the Mr. Speaker so that at least they can have that sense of belonging also in government. All right, so Honorable you for balance and stability, is it the Northwest or the North Central? It is a very difficult question because I've already said that um, our group intendment is to unify members to tow the line of party supremacy and the uh, dictate of our leaders. I'm mentioning party supremacy because APC has the majority of members elect. So definitely, um, going by the practice world over, the um, APC is supposedly to you know, fill in the presiding officers. And that is why the group, in its wisdom, was able to attract membership from other parties, PDP, a Labour Party, and uh, SDP, even the YPP and uh, NNPP, uh, into its fold. And the consideration is the decision of the leadership or the leaders of our party and the stakeholders should be binding on each and every one of us and, and we should support it. So if I now come to preempt whatever decision that will come from the leaders and the, and, and, and the party, uh, I think I'm not being fair to the hard work and the sleepless nights they are giving this issue. Um, I have given a, a, an envelope statement and I think um, that, should, that should be enough to satisfy Ujimoiki. That's fair enough. Okay, we're discussing a battle for 10th National Assembly leadership with the member of House of Representatives, Rep. 